No, no. Actually, we have uh, scheduled that to be coincide with the anniversary of really? uh, Ondoy. Supposedly, the judging would be on October. And no? you know what would be the best judging for <laughs> the results of your contest? Yes. Kung mag ondoy ulit. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll actually see if that design stands up to another ondoy. So, uh, so the judging will be done by whom? Who will be the judge? Uh, we have international architects mm. as well as... Uh, by yourself? Main, uh, yeah, we, we have chosen uh, many uh, hmm. uh, architects who are, as well as uh, persons who are uh, aware of uh, green solutions right, uh, right. to participate in the judging. Mm -hmm. And the winner, what happens to the design? Does it get you know you build the design you you yes. actually implement the design yes right? we we'll implement the design and who pays for is there like a, a, a maximum cost that it shouldn't go over I mean if you design it how much should it cost uh, we peg the cost. Uh, for the housing unit to be a maximum of four four hundred thousand pesos, I think that's the ceiling for the low cost housing in the four hundred thousand pesos. Yes. Mahal talagang battle design ito <laughs> to be that to be that uh, inexpensive. Uh, and then yeah, the rest of the structures. The, the beneficiaries would be, I think, the teachers uh, mm. of uh, Taguig City who were uh, affected by the typhoon yeah. Ondoy. So all right. So September twenty four. Yeah. 2010, we'll mm. actually see one winning entry chosen from among no, global entries. Not, not, that's not yet the judging. The, not judging, yet the judging would be on uh, December. Ah, December pa. Yeah. Ah, okay. But the closing of the closing registration is and September the, 10th. This, before, yes. And then the ju judging will take place on what date? Uh, December, first week of December. First week of December. And the will naman, be announced on Kala ko doon naman sa anniversary ng uh, Asian tsunami <laughs> in December 26. <laughs> anyway. our, our first schedule actually hmm. is uh, October, so it's the judging na. Ah, but, okay. uh, because of some uh, hey. technical problems. Uh, well, we, just like what we're having. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, Ray, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we're excited to see all of the ideas that will go into the Design Against the Elements competition. And mm -hmm. we hope to see you back in the show mm -hmm. when uh, the winner is chosen by December. Yes. All right, thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Well, the most resourceful TV hero of all time has got to be MacGyver. The fictional genius action man could get out of any sticky situation by cobbling together some life-saving device out of ordinary everyday items, maybe even bottles. So if you find yourself marooned by another ondoyonic flood, how would you apply some MacGyver skills to help you survive. If you were trapped by a flood and had to call for help, how does this sound? This SMS alert tone created by telecommunication giant Nokia closely resembles the universal distress signal SOS. You can send out an SOS by honking your car horn or by flashing your headlights. But if your car is submerged and you're stuck at home, blow the code on a whistle. Beat it on something noisy or flash the pattern through a mirror or flashlight. One, two, three, and that's S. And then O is one, two, three, then S again. One, two, three. Should you feel the need to float, your best bet is that five gallon water container sitting in your kitchen. Just empty it for use as a makeshift inflatable, the way the unsung heroes of Andoy and Pepeng used them to save people, including little kids, who were trapped on their roofs. You can also try to use your airbag, but be wary of the obvious dangers posed by the debris of a raging flood, like, say, this crocodile. Keep in mind, too, that if the thing you try to float is too heavy, the airbed may sink. If you have 250,000 plastic bottles at your disposal, you can be like this man who just made his very own floating Mexican island paradise. If you're stuck at home without power, you'll need to solve simple physics and chemistry problems under pressure. The most basic, starting a fire. With fire, you have a heat source to keep your body warm. You can heat your food, boil rainwater, and send distress signals. There are actually many ways to start a fire depending on the materials that you have. The obvious choice, of course, are matches, but if they are not waterproof, forget about it. You can also try your luck with a flint. It's included in many Swiss Army knives. Just make sure to have something flammable handy. If there's enough sunlight, you can also use the good old magnifying glass or in a pinch, the rear of a soda can after being shined by chocolate. Of course, you could have just avoided all this unnecessary fuss if you only had an emergency kit tucked away at the highest point of your house. You should keep enough supplies in your home to meet the needs of your family for at least three days. 